Hey everyone, this is Daniel from Couch Potato Camping. Today we're going to show you how to winterize your RV. Step one of winterizing your RV is to remove all the water and condensation out of your RV's water lines. So one of the first things you want to do is make sure that you turn off the flow of water to your RV's hot water tank. You want to make sure that your bypass valves are turned such that the water will bypass the hot water tank. That is because you do not want to put antifreeze into your RV's hot water tank. So here you can see I'm opening up the low point drains within our RV. I'm opening up the low point drain for the hot water, the cold water, and the drain valve for the fresh water tank. Next thing you want to do is go around your RV and open up the water valves, spigots, and faucets on your RV. That includes your shower as well. This will allow the water to drain from the water lines in your RV down through your low point drains. Now you can see here, this is a shot underneath our RV. This shows where the low point drains are on our RV and you can see how the water is flowing out. I allowed for the water to drain out of our water lines for about 30 to 40 minutes. The next step, step two, is you want to drain out the hot water or any remaining water within your hot water tank. Now, as I said before, you wanna make sure that the valves are turned in your water system such that the water flow is bypassing your hot water tank on the back side. Once that's done, you can come around to the access panel on the front of your hot water tank and see the two components that you will really be using for this process. The top component is the pressure release valve. So I went ahead and opened that and allowed any overall pressure to be uh, released from the hot water tank. And of course, you wanna do this when any of the water inside the hot water tank is cold. You do not wanna do this when there's hot water within your hot water tank. Now in ours, it's a little interesting because the valve, the pressure release valve is right behind the clasp to hold the access panel. So it's a little odd to find the right position to keep that valve open. Next, you want to get a socket and wrench that fits your RV's water plug, which also has your cathode tube on the backside, and gently loosen that up. You'll see once you loosen this up, some water will begin to pour out of the hot water tank. And on ours, I allowed that to drain out just for a little bit, just again, so some of the water pressure and some of the air started to exit out of our hot water tank. Once some of the water and air got into the tank, then I opened up the top pressure release valve and you'll see how the water flow is much different. This is also a great time to inspect the cathode tube on your hot water tank. This is a sacrificial element that's inside your hot water tank, much like it's your house. And it's a good time to inspect that and see if you need to replace that. Now you can see how I'm releasing the pressure on the inside of the hot water tank and the water flow goes much quicker at that point. Again, you wanna do this until all the water is coming out of the hot water tank as much as possible. And this might take a few minutes because you have to remember on our particular RV, our hot water tank is six gallons. And so sometimes there's the potential of five plus gallons to be able to be uh, drained out of it. Once the water has drained fully out of your hot water tank, then it's a good time to inspect the inside of your hot water tank visually. Also, this is a great time if you have the hot water tank flush wand to clean out any debris that might be on the inside. We'll put a link to that down below in the description for this video. Now our RV's water tank is only about a year old, so it's in really good condition, and I did not see any uh, loose sediments in there. Next, you want to just wipe up any water. 
that gets captured inside the access panel to the hot water tank. And then once you are done with that, it's time to put the plug back into the hot water tank. Again, use the same wrench and socket. This is a deep socket. I believe ours is an inch and 16th, uh, but be sure to check your specific hot water tank. Again, you wanna use a deep socket for this and put it in tightly, but not over crank it so you don't crack the case to the hot water tank. Also, when you put this back on, it's a good time to put on some plumber's tape, which will help seal that plug. Next, what you want to do is take a fitting that'll fit your air pump. In our case, this is ours. And again, I'll put a link to this below in the description of this video. This fits onto the fill valve of your RV's water system. This will allow me to use our tire pumps that we use on our tire and RV to blow down the water lines. And for your specific RV, make sure to read your manufacturer's suggested PSI that you should use for this operation. On ours, I'm gonna use about 30 to 40 PSI to blow down the water lines. And you also wanna make sure that the valves are open uh, on your RV's low point drains. And that way the air will escape out of your RV's water lines and push out any moisture down through the low point drains. Now here I'm just setting up our pump that we use for our tires on the car and the RV. And I'm gonna hook that up to the connection onto our RV's water lines. Now our air pump is digital, so I can set it to a specific PSI. And in our case, I'm gonna set it to 30 PSI to start with. Again, you need to be careful with RV water lines. They are not rated for high PSI. So I would suggest not going above probably 40 to 50 PSI for the water lines in your RV. And again, make sure you read your manufacturer's suggestions for winterizing your RV for that. Now here I'm just adding pressure to the system. I made sure that all of the faucets and spigots were open so the air would leak out of the system on the inside and the low point drains below the RV are open. Next, what you want to do is go around and make sure that you close all the valves on your uh, RV's water line system, so your low point drains, etc., but leave open your spigots and faucets. We will be adding the RV and Marine antifreeze, which is specific for these vehicles. And in our case, our RV system has a separate line that attaches to the water pump in which I can draw out the antifreeze into our system. Now, if you do not have this, you can pour this into your freshwater tank and use your onboard water pump to suck out the antifreeze and get that into your RV's water system that way. Simply just remove the plug on this line if you have this option, open up the valve which goes into the back end on the supply side of the water pump. I ended up using about two gallons. We have a fairly small RV, so two gallons of antifreeze uh, put into our water lines did the trick and it allowed for a little extra for me to put into our black and gray tank Which you also want to do you want to flush a little bit of the antifreeze down into your uh, black tank um, For the winter and also keep just a little bit in the toilet bowl 
As you're doing this, you should go around your RV and make sure that the antifreeze is flowing through all the open spigots, like the shower and the kitchen area. And if you have any outdoor hoses, etc., make sure that antifreeze or the pink liquid is flowing through that. And that's how you know that the water lines within your RV is full of antifreeze. And again, I have to remind you that you do not want to put antifreeze into your RV's hot water tank. Make sure that the bypass valves are on that are closed. Now, once I'm done there, I'm going to turn the valve to that hose off and make sure all the other valves on my water system are closed. And that's it, folks. It's fairly simple. I've also included some tips at the beginning of this video. And also, if you have any questions about winterizing your RV, please feel free to leave those comments and questions below in the comments. And if you could, please uh, hit the like and subscribe and the notification bell below. We appreciate it. Thank you.